Let's go over here and check out the final package unit. I love these little jumpers I got. The red wire. The G G wire. And we're gonna energize off of the red wire here to the yellow wire for stage one. Or change tunes. I want to verify we have water flow, that's very important. is going to be close to what we had on this other 026 at 7 GPM. We're moving 24,000. 24.5 feet of extraction. This is BTU. The British. And uh, for uh, shits and giggles, we're just going to go ahead and hook up our suction and our pressures. And uh, you see we got one of our caps, grommets right here. Very important to keep our grommets in. I can see what my energy, my leaving air temperature is at a, a vent. So I replaced the Schrader valves and put new caps with grommets on them. And this one, uh, see, we got a high head on, on that, which is probably because it's very hot in the house. I wouldn't want to take any charge out, but uh, we got 107 degree air coming out of our vent here. 450 head, which is a hundred and there might be something wrong with the uh, expansion valve in this, but we may have a dirty coil. <laughs> and that coil is clean as a whistle. So, let's reattach this. What I believe is, is that it's warm in the house. Um, what we can check is, by energizing the reversal valve, checking it in cooling, and see what our pressures are then. So in heating, we have 
a normal suction pressure and a high head pressure. Let's go ahead and energize our reversal valve. If I can get. We're gonna let it run a few minutes. I don't wanna jump the gun here. Let's go ahead and check our superheat just to see. We might have some failed expansion valves. I see this one's sweating. So there, there might be some problems there. Somebody wanted me to show them how I troubleshoot an expansion valve. And it seems to be running fabulous in cooling, but not in heating. These are bi-flow expansion valves. So that means they meter in both directions. And uh, if it meters fine one way, but doesn't meter fine the other way, then that's a bad expansion valve. And that's usually just a rule of thumb we go by. Um, I could go as far as taking the sensing bulb off and doing all that, but it's easier just to go ahead and check the superheat right here at the compressor, which is gonna be this line right here. probe on it. Hopefully we're making good contact. And let's we'll see what our superheat is. So we got a 59 degree. So our superheat is not bad. We got a 40, 246, 46 degree, 50, and 55. So that's five degrees of superheat. And let's go ahead and check it back in heating mode. Well, we have cold water, so the cold water would just be the same as a cold ambient outdoor air temperature. This is an open loop, so I would expect a low uh, suction line temperature, because that's the cold gas getting back to the compressor. And our saturation is 40, so we got 9 degrees of superheat. So pretty much 9 degrees of superheat and 10 degrees of superheat and heating and cooling. And that seems all fine and dandy. Um, now it's kind of making me want to investigate even more. And let's see what our subcooling is by coming here to the evaporator. Since our TXV is right down here, that's the TXV. We want to see that temperature is doing. So, 70, 80, 80 saturation, 81 saturation, climbing to 450. That tells me that our expansion valve is not working properly so we may need to replace this expansion valve with a 450 head the coils clean the blower nine so 900 cfm is what the blowers putting out as far as what the board is telling me it's putting it out. So I think the fact is is that's what we're dealing with. Alright we got an 87 degree 88 degree Saturation is 122. Saturation is 122. Head pressure discharge is 4, 435. Um, bad T. XP. So 
that is how I kind of diagnose that. Now, if I wanted to get even more into it, um, it could be there's moisture in the system because it was low and that is what's messing up the TXV. But the only other temperature I can take would be in the cooling mode on this line. So I have to put it back in cooling. So it's 32 degrees. Thirty two degrees sub cooling and eight degrees superheat. So now we need to move to the other side of it here and take our superheat from this side of the expansion valve. Which I need to flip this around. right here liquid line is between the coax coil and the expansion device in cooling mode coil is, coax coil is in the back back there so it's feeding the refrigerant up into the valve but this this side of here would be the heating and this side would be the cooling so um, the temperature here we're looking at roughly 80 degrees so we're looking at about a 22 degree Seventy-eight degrees, a twenty-four, twenty-four degree subcooling, and then superheat for that would be on our suction. Put our sensor bulb is right there. And that's going to 60 degrees. Saturation is gonna probably climb up to about 50. So 50 and 55. So five degrees superheat and cooling. With a head and a suction, a 60 degree line temp for cooling, a 42 degree saturation, uh, 42 degrees, 22 degrees, 22 degrees of superheat. 24, let's say 22 degrees of superheat. And this is cooling. You got a head pressure of 310, 310, and a suction pressure of 125. 125. That TXV for this unit. And I believe the fact that it did have a leak, it may have sucked some white moisture into it. And uh, that's probably what's affecting it. It is what it is. It's pretty simple. It's not, looks like that's what we're dealing with. Because uh, it seems to be operating, this is exactly what you see in cooling. It's operating perfect, but in heating, say that we need an expansion valve for that one. Chances are 
we have expansion valve problems because moisture got in the system and it could be just contaminated refrigerant with non-condensables. I hate working in this sand. So that's how we stand on that. I hope you guys picked up a little info on that.